Greetings and welcome back. My name is Aaron Craig with Be Honest Games, and in this part five of our tutorial, we are going to be finishing up our cutscene as best as we can. So we've covered a bunch, and we're still going to write out a lot more code. So let's go ahead and just dive right into it and get coding. Again, as I come across things that are unique that we haven't done yet, I'll take some time and explain those. So let's get on to case eleven. Here, uh, we're going to say Baldrick dies. So if he gets hit with the electric attack, then he is going to die. So we're going to say his sprite index will equal Baldrick faint. His health, let's type that out correctly, will equal zero. And his image speed will equal 0.1. So we're going to play through that sprite, and what I want to do is if index is equal to 4, and that is specifically because on his faint animation there are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I want him to play all the way through, and then when it's done playing all the way through, then we will uh, do something because he'll be fainted on the ground kind of dead-ish. So once he's fully dead, we're going to set his image speed equal to zero, and we're going to increase the current step, and we'll throw in the break. So if they don't do it, then that is what's going to happen, and then we're going to have Sarah walk back towards the bed. To do that, she's going to be walking to the left. So we need to change our sprite index equal to SPR Sarah walk left. Her image speed will equal one. And if her if her x coordinate is greater than seven hundred, we will decrement her x. Now I'm doing it greater than rather than a less than or equal to, and this is just another way to do it. As long as I have an if statement that is checking her x coordinate, and then when she reaches a certain x coordinate, it does something else, we are good to go. So if she's not there, well, once she's there, we're going to increase the current step. So uh, let me indent that properly. Indenting is important because it helps you be able to read it easily and quickly. So now she's going to move up to the bed. And I'm finishing this off because you have to code what would happen if they don't do the quick time event. Maybe in your game, if they fail the quick time event, then they would just die and the screen would fade to black. In this case, for whatever reason, we're going to have her walk back to her bed. And I'll show you that we can actually use this code later on, even if uh, they do successfully implement the quick time event, which is a cool thing to be able to do. So we're going to change her sprite index. We're going to say if her y is greater than 505 minus her y by 1 each step. Else, if she's there, go ahead and increment the current step and throw in the break. Okay, case 14. So the last case that we are going to have um, if they did not successfully do the quick time event. Now, the way I'm going to handle this is a little confusing, but imagine that uh, for this specific cutscene, what I want to happen is if they do not dodge the electric attack, then Baldrick dies and Sarah walks back to her bed. If he does successfully block the, t the attack, then he is going to taunt her and then disappear, and we're going to have Sarah walk back to bed anyway. And the way that we're going to handle this is that when she gets to the bed, something specific will happen if they if he actually did escape the room. So first we're going to say um, her sprite index will equal her walk down, which kind of looks like she's sleeping. And we'll change the image speed to zero and the image index to zero. That way she's not moving and she's on the first one. Now we're going to come up here. I'm going to go into this create event, and I'm going to have escaped room. We're going to put this equal to false. We're going to create this variable, this boolean, to then be able to say if they did leave, then we're going to do something different. So we're going to come back up here 
to this section and we're going to set this escaped variable escaped room equals true and then we're going to use that right here so we're going to say if escaped room making sure that's the right variable and counter is equal to 60 room go to and let's make a new room here so we're going to go in we're going to create a new room the background we're going to alter just to a bright green oh that is bright and we're going to change this to objects again just in case we need to and And then we're going to jump back into this scene. And if you don't know how I'm doing that, I'm pressing F12 to make all of those other tabs disappear, which is useful. So we're going to go to room one. And we're going to change um, Baldrick's image alpha equal to one. And we're going to set his uh, X coordinate equal to 500, his Y coordinate equal to 500. We're going to say current step, we're going to jump to step 17, and we're going to say counter is equal to zero. Now, the reason we're changing his image alpha is on step 15, which is what we're going to do next, is he's actually going to fade from existence. So we need to re-existify him, <laughs> however you want to say that. So we need to change his alpha again. Okay, let's go ahead and run this and make sure that everything is working properly typed out a lot of code, I'm sure I made an error somewhere. So, I'll press delete so we can see the current steps and making sure that everything is going fine. Up until this point, we've tested this, we know it works, shouldn't have an issue. Okay, it hits him, perfect, it disappears, he dies, she walks back to her bed except for the part where she didn't move over to the left. <laughs> so I missed one section there, but that is exactly what we want. Um, that is what happens if they were to fail the QuickTime event. So uh, on here, on case 14, um, I forgot to do one thing. So we're going to say move back to bed, and we're going to say uh, change obj Sarah dot sprite index equal to spr sarah walk left and we're going to say if her x coordinate is greater than 660 then minus her x coordinate and then all of this right here is actually going to be encapsulated inside of another else statement so i'm just going to select it press tab come down here and put that right there Okay, so this moves her onto her bed, and then she changes her sprite, and then if they have escaped the room, all of this will take place. And then what we would want to do is set the end of the cutscene if this is the end of it. So we come in here, and we can add one more if statement, and we could just say, if escaped room is equal to false, then... We could be done and this depends on what you want to do you can call the function game end if you wanted it to be over you can call the function game restart although both of those are kind of for debugging purposes i wouldn't actually re recommend using those but uh if they didn't succeed then this is the end of the cutscene, and we're not going to see anything else so what we're going to do is i'm actually just going to put game restart because obviously the main character needs to live so this would give them a chance to redo the quick time event so with that, let's go ahead and jump into case 15. And so now the QuickTime event has been successfully done and now we need to implement what happens. So if they do it correctly, we're going to destroy the attack. Um, that way it doesn't actually hit him, so it moves on. So we had this called attack and we are going to destroy that by calling this function. And we're gonna say if instance exists with an exclamation point. Uh, yeah, spell that correctly. 
obj dialog box. So we're going to make a dialog box. And we're going to say db is equal to instance create layer. We're going to put this right above obj baldrick. So dot y minus 75. I'm going to put it in the objects layer. And it's going to be object dialog box. And so we want to set the text. So db dot my text equals not today. I'm out. So he says he's going to get out of here. And then what we're going to do is check for the keyboard. And this will allow the player to say when they are ready to move on. So once the player presses space, we're going to set the counter equal to one. And we're going to say plus plus current step. And we're setting the counter equal to one because in the next step, after I put a break in here, in case 16, what I want to do is uh, change the image alpha of Baldrick so that it equals counter and then if the counter is equal to zero, so if the counter has reached zero all the way, then we are going to say instance destroy dialog box. And we're going to actually put the current step back to 12. And the reason for that is because I want to see Sarah move all the way back to her bed like we already set up so that, that code is still used. And so here for the counter, we're actually going to say counter minus equals 0.01. And what that is going to do is Baldrick's image alpha is going to go down, so he's just going to disappear little by little over time until he is completely gone. So now we are jumping back to 12, but then if we remember in step 14, we said if they did escape the room successfully, then we're going to jump to 17. So we have one more case to do, and then I think that will be it. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to say if an instance exists obj dialog box. If it doesn't exist, then we're going to make a new one. db equals instance create layer obj baldrick dot x obj baldrick dot y minus 100. And we're going to put it in the objects layer again and obj dialog box. And we're going to set db dot my text equal to now. Where am I? He teleported himself out and got a little lost. And we're going to do the same thing up here. We're going to say if keyboard check pressed vk space, then we're going to destroy uh, ourselves. We're going to destroy the dialog box. Where's that player can move equal to true because that needs to be reset so they can move around. And we're going to stop the sound background music because otherwise it will continue playing even afterwards. Okay? So now let's run this and cue the quick time event and see what happens. Right after I add one more parenthesis and then make sure everything is syntactically correct. So let's run this and see what happens. And this time I will actually run the QuickTime event so we should see everything proceed smoothly. I will press delete so we can watch the current steps go here. Okay. Dodge it. I can press space. We can see that the current steps were moving around, which is exactly what we want. Sarah moves, gets back in bed. A second later, we're now here. And press space, and then we can move around. And that is an entire cutscene and how to build one. Um, the last thing that I'm going to talk about is this paused event. So what we need to have is a way to actually pause the cutscene, which I'm just going to throw right up here at the very beginning. You can put it anywhere inside of here, but it's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is say keyboard check 
pressed, and we'll do VK escape for this. And all we need to do is set current state equal to paused. And for this cutscene specifically, we're going to pause the background music because it will keep playing even in the paused state. Uh, ooh. Bracket, right. And we're also going to say if keyboard check pressed VK enter and the current state is equal to paused because that's what we just set it to by pressing escape. We'll set current state equal to active and we will resume that audio. wrong one <laughs> okay so that's that's it so if we run this one last time we'll see that we don't have to put anything in the paused you can if you want to but if you do this it pauses it Sarah's still moving so you could go a little bit farther if you wanted to uh, you don't necessarily have to but now we have a way to pause the cutscene resume it so on and so forth and it just works. Uh, so this is a full cutscene, guys. I hope that's helpful. I hope you find it useful. And I hope that you use it in your own game. That's what I've got for you, though. If you have questions, comments, if you want to see anything else, if I missed any essential features in a cutscene, please leave a comment below. Hit me up on Twitter. Let me know, and I can append to this series if I feel that you have found a good point that I missed. So, that's all. Thank you for joining me. I hope it's been helpful and useful. And I will talk to you soon. As always, have fun making great games, though. And I'll talk to you later. If you'd like to support me in making these game dev tutorials, consider sponsoring me on Patreon. The awesome people currently supporting me are on the screen, and they get cool benefits like one-on-one -on -one training sessions, early access to videos, and more. Check it out in the link below, or visit patreon.com slash beyondusgames.